Hey, everybody, it is the after show. I'm so happy that Senator Cory Booker is here joining us from Washington, D.C. And Rachel Lindsay joins us from Florida. Her new podcast, Higher Learning with Van Lathan and Rachel Lindsay. Uh, new episodes drop on Tuesdays and Fridays and Bachelor Happy Hour. Uh, you can catch weekly. Um, I want to ask you to, what do you say to white people who want to get involved in the movement and don't know what to do? What's your advice? Go ahead, Rachel. Well, yeah, I mean, at this point, the, the internet is at your fingertips. So there's so much that you can research and try to figure out ways that you can be involved in your community. Maybe if you don't have a big platform like we do. Um, a lot of my friends have kids and I say, you should be molding the next generation. There's so much that you could be doing with your young kids to help them see things in this new world about what this movement is all about, about equality for all of us. Also a lot of reading, volunteering, donating, um, just educating yourselves on what it is that Black Matters, Lives Matter mean and what we're fighting for. Senator, anything to add to that? Well, I just wanna add, I, first of all, I think it's beautiful that, that to see a couple that was out protesting together because everything that we have as Americans is stemmed out of protests. The 40 hour work week, uh, I mean, all our workers' rights, came out of massive protest movements, suffrage uh, gains, massive protest movements. America's Disabilities Act came from artists of activism in the disability community, Stonewall and the LGBTQ protests. We are a country that, that I'm telling you this as a senator, change doesn't come from Washington. It comes to Washington of people demanding it through pro protests. Hell, the entire United States of America began with protests against the British oppression. And so for you not to see yourself as an activist, when you owe a debt to people that were willing to put their lives on the line for you, and for you to sit comfortably uh, and not do something. So I, I think the challenge for, for everybody, number one is this idea that your justice is separate than mine is just such a lie. Um, uh, uh, you know, James Baldwin, when Angela Davis was arrested, said, they may come for you in the morning. If they come for you in the morning, they're going to come for me at night. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in a country that is so much more integrated than we know in terms of just the lives. And by the way, out of control policing practices in this country are disproportionately affecting African Americans. But if you think that the, the death rate of cops killing police, which is higher in our country, it's like 70 times higher than Britain. Uh, people dying at the hands of police, like 20 times higher than Germany. We're way out of whack with the planet Earth in terms of people dying at the hands of police. And it's disproportionately black and brown people, but it's also white folks. We've got to all understand that this has to change and we have a responsibility to do something about it. On that note, Senator, how do you want to see a policing change? It's a big question, but uh, what do you want to see change? Well, two things. One is, uh, we wrote a bill, me, Kamala Harris, uh, the Congressional Black Caucus leader, Karen Bass, and some others that has now got a majority of the House of Representatives supporting it, uh, close to 40 senators in the Senate supporting it. And this is just basic. If you do something wrong as a cop, you can't be immune to prosecution. You can't be immune to, to lawsuits. That Their practices should be banned, like chokeholds, no-knock warrants. And the third sort of major contour of it is report your information. Sunshine's the ultimate disinfected. We need to have a, a databases of, of misconduct, police use of force and more. So that's one big pillar is police accountability. But the second main pillar, frankly, that's not covered by this bill, what I yearn for in my society, you know, one of great activists says, what does love look like in public? It looks like justice. I want us to be a society of love, which says to someone who's struggling with a disability, struggling with uh, addiction, struggling with poverty, that we're not going to criminalize you. We're going to be a society that invests in empowering you. And let me tell you that the, the, the not so well kept secret is when you do that, you, your need for police go way down. You save taxpayer dollars and you elevate human potential. One example, Seattle did a study. What's more expensive to keep a, a beautiful fellow Americans with mental illness homeless on the streets to let them be there or to put them in supportive housing, which is expensive. I built it as a mayor. And they found out that it was cheaper. They were saving millions of dollars if they were building more supportive housing because those, those homeless folks on the streets, they end up engaging with police in hospital emergency rooms in jails. It is so much more expensive to do it the way we're doing as America. Between the time I was in law school and the time I was mayor of the largest city in New Jersey, we were building a new jail or prison every 10 days. Mm. Rest of our infrastructure crumbling, but we were investing 
hundreds of billions of dollars to create the system of mass incarceration. It is a terrible waste of money, an assault on human dignity, and doesn't reflect the love in our society. We need to shift away from uh, this over-reliance on police to do everything for us. And cops know this, uh, and just starting to invest in more enlightened, more loving society that invests in people. Senator Booker, Gregory F. emailed, what's your take on Mitt Romney marching with Black Lives Matter protesters? Uh, will you be joining in next? Uh, so I, I love that Mitt Romney uh, did that. I really do respect to him for, for making that happen. And uh, I, I don't know who this person is, but uh, as with my other guests, it, 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 I, I've marched many a times uh, for uh, uh, justice for African-American communities uh, and, and proud of that. And I'm going to continue to be an activist as well as a senator. Rachel, uh, Rachel S. wants to know if there are any single Bravo liberties you think would be a good bachelor or bachelorette. That's a great question. It is. I know you watch Bravo. Uh, well, I would say, oh, wait, no, she's, I was about to say Portia, but she has a man. Right. Who's single? Garcelle. Garcelle uh -huh. would yes. be a great bachelorette. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think who else is single. There's so many. I watch Senator Booker. I watch all the shows. Okay. okay. I watch all the Bravo shows. What would you recommend <laughs> for somebody like me that, is there a show that you would, recommend because I, I've gone the only reality show I can well I get up well people get upset with me if I tell you that I watched the British baking show one of my friends no that's cool yeah well, got maybe me you that. should try top chef that's uh good. I think you would like below deck too maybe below okay. deck is good yeah. what is below deck about it's like an upstairs downstairs on a charter yacht every week so you see the crews all fighting and sleeping with each other and the guests are causing havoc and but it's real it's great Okay. It's like Downton Abbey on a boat. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Senator um, Tom D said, you've long been a supporter of legalizing marijuana. When do you think Jersey and New York will legalize recreational use? So I'm a guy who's never drank, never smoked pot, but I'm the leader in the Senate for trying to get it done nationally, frankly. And, and, and I just think that people should not say, I want pot to be legalized without in the same breath or somewhere in the same paragraph saying we should expunge the records of all those people who've been convicted unjustly of marijuana, because there's no difference in America between blacks and whites for smoking pot or dealing pot even, but yeah. blacks are three to four times more likely to be convicted of it. 2017, last year we have data, there were more marijuana arrests in this country than all violent crime arrests combined. Unbelievable. And one criminal conviction for that, for doing things that two of the last three presidents admitted to doing, can't yeah. get jobs, can't get loans from banks, Pell Grant, a lot of things are, are excluded from you. So I want to see marijuana legalized nationally. I want to see uh, it, people's records for doing it expunged. I want to see the tax receipts reinvested in communities that have been disproportionately targeted. And the last thing I want is this not to go into the corporate culture where the, the, you see corporations, pharmaceutical companies now suddenly running the marijuana industry. Right. I want to make sure women and minorities get an equal shot at these licenses so that they can build wealth uh, in, in, in their communities as well. Thanks, you two. That was awesome.